When we were young, we were told that the world that we lived in is for ours to change. That we have the power to change everything. To create a better future, a better world. We were told that we could do anything if we put our minds to it. I misinterpret this just like any naive kid and just knew what we were. We were superheroes. And even at a young age, I thought that in order for me to change the world, it was not enough for me to be human. I needed to become a superhero. So I believed that I was one. <laughs> oh, there was no stopping me back then. I rose up at the world that was before me fearlessly. I was so strong and so light, I could believe I could fly. I would ride on my red tricycle and patrol the streets of my neighborhood and give a firm look at the little kids and say, Hey, a bad man. <laughs> those, in those times, Hey, a bad man. <laughs> on Halloween, I would chase the little kids who were stealing other kids' candies. And ironically, some of those kids were Superman. So what I would do is, because I'm so smart, I would get a green candies out of my baskets and just throw at their little heads. That is who I was, a superhero. Wanting to become a superhero isn't because we just want to shoot lasers out of our eyes or shoot webs out of our hands. Even though I do agree that they're pretty cool. But it is what superheroes truly represent. They represent the best of our own selves. They represent our full potential and it drives us to become them. Because we, at one point of our lives, we want to reach our maximum potential. For me, my superhero was Batman, because Batman represented justice. And those who know me very well know that justice is an essential part of me. Just like that moment in Halloween, I could not stand those little kids getting their candy stolen. And just like that, I took this important character trait of mine, and I linked it to Batman and what he represented. And that's what we did when we were kids. We took a part of ourselves that was important to us and we related to these people on paper, wanting to become a version of them. If you were a true found feminist, you would have leaned towards Wonder Woman. If you wanted to inspire people, hope, give hope to people, you would have liked Superman. If you saw responsibility as an important character trait of yours, you would have leaned towards Spider-Man. We all have something in ourselves that we see in superheroes. Some way along the line in our youths, we start to notice things. We start to see things a bit more closely. We look at our small hands and we know we do not have super strength. When we trip and fall and bruise our knees, we know that we are not indestructible. We realize we do not have billions of dollars to create ourselves a Batmobile. And this may seem like just a sad story of little kids coming to terms of their own humanity, understanding that they're not superheroes. But this has been the story of all your lives. How have we all at some point in our lives been that little kid, stripped ourselves into weakness because we were convinced that we couldn't do it, that we were not good enough, that we were just flesh and bones? As if the moment we tried to fly, we would die, not because we would fall down to the ground, but because we would fly so fast that the wind would cut our flesh into pieces. We doubted the potential that was inside us because we couldn't handle seeing it. Maybe you wanted to become something you could not accept yourself to be. A writer, an actor, a poet, an engineer, a leader, a national symbol, a mother, a father, a friend, a lover. And we justify our weaknesses because of the hard hits we got in our past and the fears that followed us through our lives. We fell to the pits that we and only we created. A famous writer once wrote, There is no sorrow that endures. Just as the light perishes, so to perish is sorrow. As if sorrow does not leave its mark on us. For we hide such pain. And believe me when I say that we relive the moments of tragedy than the moments we see ourselves happy. So we try to erase those moments, never facing them, even though that was we were told when we were kids. Fight your pain, face your fears. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And we were told to get stronger and stronger at such an early age. In order to protect ourselves, from the future forces that would hurt us in our further lives. That's difficult to do when you do not know how to get strong. When you realize what superheroes truly are, you'll understand how pain 
can be turned into strength. So let's start with my superhero. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Now there have been many interpretations of Batman, but there's always been one factor that has made him what he is. Grief. The pain of seeing his parents dying right in front of him. And Batman uses that moment to remind himself why he's fighting crime. Every punch, every kick that he makes is created to that moment. Instead of the pain consuming him, letting the dark side pull him down, he uses it as a means to bring justice. Now, I'm sure some of you have lost someone or something in your lives. It breaks out a hole inside us that makes it hard to fill. And some move on, and some don't. And those who don't are on constant rewind, going back, never able to let go. Well, don't. Don't let go of that pain. Use it. Use it as a means to make something beautiful. My mentor saw through my pain and understand how it was consuming me. And so he said, just write it all down. So I did. Starting from sloppy rhymes and weird strokes, I wrote what I could. And in the end, everything that was inside me came from the tips of my fingers to the strokes of my pen and finally on the paper that was before me. And I realized I did not only face my pain, I embraced it, I hugged it, and I accepted it what it was, making it closer to my heart. And that is the key of being Batman. Green Lantern is one of the superiors that can create anything from his imagination to a ring. But the ring is, of course, no different than a pen in the hands of a writer. One of the main problems that Green Lantern has while fighting his foes is his lack of imagination. We all have our talents and skills, but it is our lack of imagination that pulls us down. Another aspect of Green Lantern is that he has to have an equal proportion of willpower in order to create his imaginations. We all have these ideas, these thoughts in our heads, but we don't have the willingness to pursue them. Our dreams are just dreams, nothing more. And one of the reasons I like about Green Lantern is that his greatest weakness is not some silly little rock, but fear itself. Because if the bearer of the ring is in constant fear and has lost courage, then all of his or her imagination will become unstable. How have we all faded away our dreams because of a silly, fearful voice in our heads that said, Stop. Doubting yourself will put you in a constant circle where you will repeat the words, if only, if only, over and over again. And at some point in your lives, you will go back to that moment where you could have done something extraordinary and you will accidentally say to yourself, If only I wasn't afraid. Wolverine is probably one of the most indestructible characters in superhero comics. His entire skeleton is made of the strongest metal in the Marvel Universe. He cannot be killed. But just because he cannot be killed does not mean he cannot feel pain. Which comes to my point about resilience. Sometimes life is going to give you a sucker punch right in the face. And it will knock you down so hard that you will never ever think about going back up. When I look at Wolverine, I see a man who has endured hundreds of years of physical and mental pain and still continues to endure it. That is what we all have to do. We have to endure so that we can keep moving forward. Now, Daredevil is a superhero who fights crime with Kung Fu and nunchucks. But what makes him apart from most superheroes is his blindness. He cannot see. And because of that, he has to compensate that by using his other senses, his hearing senses, his nose. And which those senses become so strong that you sometimes wonder that he, if he's better off being blind. In life, our weaknesses sometimes make our lives miserable and intolerable. And because we cannot stand being weak, we try to turn our weaknesses into strength. But sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes your weaknesses cannot be changed. You cannot tell a blind man to see better, but can tell him to hear a little bit better. Once you understand 
and accept your weaknesses and what they are and how you can counteract them, you will understand how you will get stronger and how your pain will not be pain, but a factor of strength. Superman, finally. Now, there have been many interpretations of Superman, but some do not like his interpretation in the movie Man of Steel. But I personally believe that that, that version of Superman is the most humanized version we've got in terms of loneliness, alienation, and finding purpose in life. In the movie, he, Superman suffers from being different. He comes from the planet Krypton, which literally makes him an alien in our world. His, he has all these powers, but his father Pocket is concerned that humanity will reject him. He feels lonely in a world that he's part of and tries to find a sense of purpose in it. And later on, he meets his biological father, Jor-El, who tells him that while other Kryptonians will genetically engineer to do one specific task in life, he was naturally conceived because of one idea. What if a child dreams of something greater than what society intended him to be? And just like that, just like Superman, we are destined to the choices that we and only we can make. We either become what society wants us to be or become something greater we see ourselves to be. But in order to do that, we must suffer first. In this scene, Superman tries to fly for the first time in his life. He jumps from ice after ice he goes higher and higher, higher than ever before, but it's still not enough for him. He knows he can do more. As he flies, he gains momentum, and you see that he is smiling because he realizes he's actually flying. Later on, something happens as he panics. Something unthinkable happens. Superman falls. Superman, the most iconic superhero of all time falls down to the ground miserably. <coughs> and after he falls, he gets back up just like any normal person would do. And as he sighs and walks on the icy surface and looks at the sky at his son, he remembers the words that his father Jarrell told him, that he, in time, might become a beacon of hope, an ideal for people to strive towards, that he might become an inspiration for all, become something greater. After all the loneliness and alienation and resentment he felt throughout his entire life, Superman finally accepts who he is and what he could become, that he could become something greater. And that moment of acceptance is what makes Superman fly. Now these things that I said are for you to think about a lot. Do not let go of the superior that you sought to be. Because if you don't, you might look into the mirror and you might see something very different. You'll look into the mirror and say, is this me? Not that you do not know your own appearance, but because of the cracked reflection of your own characters. Split into the pieces of glass that can be perpetrated by only one thing. You. After the pain has left from your feet, you will start picking out your own jigsaw puzzles. I'm just forgetting that hundreds of tiny parts of you are lost, forever. When we look at this life, this journey, this promise, we forget that there is no pain without love and no love without pain. For happiness is absurd without sadness. That this life, this promise, is nothing but being a glass on the beach, in presence of infinite possibilities and yet a beautiful anomaly. As we carry our own sorrows, we, our only wish is that we accept the possibilities, so that we can do what heroes do, to be free, to endure, to imagine without fear, to be more, and to accept our flaws, to be able to say, this is me, and this is who I am. Be the hero that you seek, and only then can you change your own reality.